Welcome to the 100th episode of the Scottish Property Podcast. Stephen Clark, we have made it to 100 episodes. Wow, wow, 100 episodes. <laughs> That's some staying power, mate. That's some staying power. And to mark the occasion, we've actually met up in person at the David Lloyd's gym, where I am a member, and we thought we'll get a wee quiet corner, but we're actually sitting in the kids' soft play. The kids' soft play with a wee coffee, looking yeah. like a couple of creeps with microphones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's amazing that we've got to this point. Yeah, no, it's been phenomenal. And we thought we'd mark this occasion by just, you know, giving, you know, recording a, a, an episode live together in person and, and chatting about it because it's come a long way in the last year and a half, isn't it? Yeah, and considering, like, oh, we didn't really actually know each other that well right back at the start. No, it was a, it was a complete off chance uh, call as well. Then it just was, was born. Um, but, you know, it's been enjoyable. It's been a good, good ride. It's been an emotional roller coaster, mate. And I <laughs> feel. <laughs> <laughs> I feel connected to you at the hip and uh, you know we've done a lot over the last couple of years do you, uh, do you know I, I, you know we spoke about quite a lot about joint venture partnerships now this kind of might be your first joint venture partnership so you've got to, do you think it's good that it keeps you accountable because I know what you keep me accountable to this podcast like there's times where you know we're both flat out growing our property businesses and, and growing our own property portfolios so to have that accountability to someone to say no on a Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. we are recording an episode every single week. Do you think that's really helped? 100% mate. Mm. I am pretty much sure that if it had just been me that started the podcast, I would have bailed out probably a couple of months in because, not because I wouldn't have been enjoying it, pretty much because there's some weeks you go and you're like, oh shit, I've not organised a guest or, yep. you know, like I've not done any prep for this. But because you've got, you don't want to let that other person down, then for me, that is a driver. I don't want to let you down. And likewise, you, you probably don't want to let, you don't want to let the side down because yeah, it's a team. I, I'm pretty sure I can just go hands up and I've let you down once, mate, and you'd have to do the interview with Mark Shanter without me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, no, absolutely. Like, I, I feel, you know, you do, you're, you're accountable to your kind of partner and making sure that you're you're pulling your weight and doing your, your part of it. And, and I think that's made it the, the driving force as well to kind of, well, keep it going to the hundred episode. Yeah, we, we've only missed about what two weeks, and that was due to holidays, yeah. and family holidays, and stuff. And uh, it's apart been consistent from that, been every th- single week. Yeah, I think we've missed one or two. Um, uh, it's been really, really good. Um, so yeah, that, this this ch- this chat about kind of you know we, we're loving this. We're lo- we're loving the fact that we can bring this kind of resource to people that are either starting out in property in the community, experienced, want to feel part of something. We're bringing no bullshit. No upsell, no nonsense. We're, we're saying how it is. We're 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 sharing the warts and all. We're not we're not kind of sugarcoating. Um, you love the investment. fame. You love the <laughs> signing the book signings. You love signing <laughs> autographs, mate. Getting selfies. T- <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> oh, the selfies from you. I'm not, I'm not even ripped you about that yet. <laughs> no, mate. It's not really about that. I yeah. mean, obviously, we both enjoy kind of helping people. And like you said right at the start, you get so many messages on Instagram. Yeah. It's impossible to reply to everybody, and it's not that you're being rude. No, yeah, it's, it's, no, it's impossible to reply with with a level of commitment they, they, they need. You know, if someone asks you a question like, "Oh, how do I get started? Or how do I finance? Or how do I do something like that?" We re- we usually then take that question and we turn it into an episode. So then, you know, someone reaches out to you. You know, how do I partner with my dad? Right, go to episode ten on successful joint ventures. Like you can kind of refer people back to them, and they can listen to us talk about it for 35, 40 minutes an hour, or we bring in a guest speaker that might be relevant to what they're covering. So it's a good resource as well for people that that you can refer to because like you do, you do got a lot of people reaching out and asking for help, and it's nice to to help people and show people what's possible as well. Yes, uh, we're building up a library here and obviously we're trying to mix it up with, you know, educational content as well as guests who have actually done it, you know, at a good level and, and, you know, so that you can see what is possible. Yeah, hats off to you for bringing in educational content because I know that when I, you know, it's my turn for, for choosing a guest or a topic, I always want something that's quite inspiring because I know that when I see someone that's ahead of me or looking ahead, that kind of drives me and pushes me forward. So I know my guests are always doing bigger stuff or it's you know it's it's quite bigger whereas you can pull it back to know this would this would help people get through this problem this is a a solution this is something that i've been asked you know maybe something that's basic to experienced investors but you always kind of make sure it's 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 grounded and it's it's real and it's it's relevant as well if there's a topic needs discussed that's in the news you're always the one that kind of brings it back to "Hmm, here's what's relevant right now i feel we're just scratching the surface as well because we've kind of built the community now and you know we've got 2,300 people in the Facebook group, you know, that are constantly engaging, asking questions, showing their deals. Um, you know, I feel that there's so much more to give as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and, and it's not us that just give it. Like you say, the people post in that group, they share experiences, they share before and after, they share 
problems, they ask questions. There's there's there's, there's decent chat in, in that community, which is which is brilliant. And we've had a lot of messages as well, but not as much now. But you know, over the last year, we've kind of grew this podcast during a global global pandemic. We started this what f- two or three months before, you know, COVID kicked in. So the many p- messages that I've got, you know, saying you know you've 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 kind of helped this community or helped us feel a part of something during a really really r- ridiculously hard time in, in, in any business in any life and you've, we've kind of we've done zoom calls we've put out our live podcast every every week so it help people kind of grow and, and we've had people thanking us for for helping them kind of get through that period yeah and one of the things i loved as well is and i'm sure a lot of people appreciate this is that i think a lot of people including myself probably kind of froze a little bit during the pandemic and thought oh i'm just gonna hold off here but the good thing about obviously partnering up with yourself and following your progress is that you, you seem to have accelerated things you know since covid <laughs> <Yeah>. struck so <laughs> i think that just seeing that i think a lot of other people take a lot of inspiration just from from yourself as well so hats off to you no uh, it's not uh, you, you always feel kind of a bit guilty or a bit of badness saying you know you've you've kind of tried to grow your business through a global pandemic where people were struggling but you know just kind of it was nice to kind of reset take that few weeks at home spend quality time with the family got fucking bored very very quickly with not being <laughs> out and active and then and then you, you know pivoted and tweaked and changed you know i did bits, bits, bits into my business and and expanded you know made different partnerships as well so yes yeah, it was one where i kind of thought there's an opportunity here you know during chaos take advantage of the opportunity it's something that i regret a lot of not doing more during the the last financial crash yeah i flipped properties and built my pot back up but i was stung by it and i froze a little bit and didn't expand whereas you're looking back now on that opportunity and you say well in 2009 and 10 look at the prices you were buying properties for they've, they've doubled again yeah. so you could have been buying at a phenomenal time and it, and, it, and you know can seriously expanding rather than contracting so i felt like it was an opportunity to try and to try and do that this time round. i think um from from my point of view i have been a bit slow in my own investing over the last year but you know i've added two properties to the portfolio we talked about our goals right at the start and uh, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm still aiming for those 20 properties by the time I'm 45, mate. But now that you've showed me those figures up in Aberdeen, <laughs> I'm going to need to maybe spend a bit more time up there to try and get in on the action. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's only taken me two years to <laughs> come round there thinking that there is actually some quite good deals up there now. Yeah, and uh, and <laughs> I was just telling you as well before that about, you know, with our speaker Chris Minch is talking about it. Uh, uh, the Aberdeen event next month's talking about how you know it's actually when you look at the the numbers it's probably the best yields in Scotland. But people are like, the press mark and stuff?" But you can you know there's there's good stuff to be done. Yeah. So yes. I think that one of the big things for me is although we've got a decent level of experience in property, I have learnt so much just from doing the interviews and speaking to the guests. You know that we have done. You know. Yeah, this has been my favourite part of it as well. Like you know. We we hate that thing when someone reaches out to you and asks if you can pick your brains. It's like like fucking no, <laughs> like you've done this for for fifteen years. You're get you're we're putting our time in and delivering a podcast where you deliver value for free and you know we enjoy it and you know. So when someone messes out and tries to pick your brain, you're like fuck off. But we we would know we wouldn't do it to someone else. It's yeah. above us. We'd want to know because we know how how encroaching on our time it is as well. So to actually provide value to these people and say can you come on our podcast and grow your social media presence and uh-huh. grow your reach and what you're trying to do in your business they're well they're more than willing to come on and openly and honestly share their stories and you know and we you know we prep them up at the start as well and say this is you know, this is a, a very informal chat is anything off the books and and, more, and i don't we've not no one said no don't talk about this or don't ask me this everyone says no i'm you know we're, we're honest we'll, we'll we'll share exactly what you, what the listeners want to know what you think the listeners want to know so yeah i've i've, I've liked that Probably the, that's probably my favourite part as well is just getting really inspiring people and asking them about their journey and their their hiccups and and you no know, the reason why and what the, the pain points they've went through and how they've grown a portfolio or, or what what their whatever their property business may be. That's my favourite part as well. Have we had any knockbacks over the last couple of years already? <laughs> loads, <laughs> loads of knockbacks. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't name anybody, loads but yeah, we have. Uh, how, how do you think this is this has shaped you? Then how do you think it's helped helped you grow over the last almost two years? I think the, the obviously the accountability factor and the kind of you know following through, following through, has been a big thing mm-hmm. for me and being consistent. Um, so that's really helped me um, in all kind of in all the whole business. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know another thing that it's obviously helped me do is is make good connections and build a network. So obviously you know part of it is that we enjoy helping people and obviously let's not let's not just let's not be about the bush. It's also good for our own. 
personal mm. brands and businesses as well because obviously people come to you they want to work with you they want to do joint ventures they want us to find them deals yeah. you know for my letting agency as well it's good i've built up a few good clients off the back of the podcast mm. and yourself included like for for your side the what you do yeah i mean mine, mine's just probably taken a bit more dramatic um turn because i think it was about episode five or six it was right at the start you know we recorded an episode about property training and i think it was like you know it was a very very common question it was a huge debate you know should you spend tens of thousands of pounds on property education and we went through it and we did try to be very biased and sit on the fence and we, we kind of gave this the the point of two sides but during these conversations there was always like negative things that came out of it we didn't like the high pressure shield tactics we didn't like the fact that people were charging 20 grand which most of the stuff you can find online for free. There's parts that you'll, you'll put together. We didn't like the fact that people weren't doing properly. They were actually teaching it and educating it. Yeah. And we looked on their social media, they didn't do it properly. And it gave me this kind of spurred kick up the arse to say, well, why sit on the fence or why bitch and moan about people that are doing that? There, there's, there's an opportunity here to, for, for me. And I did you know, the property workshops in my business and I felt like it was something that, that there was a niche there for someone that didn't, you know, Someone, there's not, there's no one that I can kind of see that's actually doing property teaching it, and it gets on my goat. And these are the, all the little piece, the pieces, or the puzzle, the glue that joins off all the knowledge and the experience. It's stuff that when you're doing the do day in day out, you find the stuff that's actually the valuable stuff. It's not the theory based stuff. The theory based stuff we can get on, you know, podcasts, YouTube channels, social media, books, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's the little pieces that, that I'm doing day in day out that helps people take action immediately because you're saying, well, this is the missing piece of the puzzle, and. You know, it was something I started off very hesitant, and I and I remember, you know, we I think we kind of spoke about it quite a lot as well, thinking, you know, I'm going to be the hit, the one of the most hated people in in Scottish property scene <laughs> by becoming one of these gurus. But you know, I I hold stand to my morals that I would never teach if I wasn't doing it. I would never, if I'm not in the trenches building my portfolio and, and doing my business, I wouldn't be teaching. I wouldn't be stand up there helping others thrive. But it was very much a an experimental thing. Let's see if I try. I, I like it. Uh, and we spoke just off here before we started it. I've gained a huge passion for it. Like, I, I was buzzing, like buzzing three days, recording, you know, doing one uh, live for three days. They're, they're intense. We start at like half eight in the morning and finish at five for three solid days. I bring in a couple of guest speakers, but the majority it's just me. And I, and by the end of it, I've completely got on like an adrenaline dump, and I can hardly move by the end of the three days. It's exhausting, and I love it. And I'm, 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 and I'm buzzing for days and days after it because you're looking at people's eyes when something drops, or a penny drops, or you show a case study, or or they ask a question, something you just realise you've changed someone's life. You've shown them the possibilities, and I'm getting a massive buzz from that. And obviously, it's helping my network and the people that I'm working with are coming in and and doing business with me or doing joint ventures. So, so yeah, I think that's the podcast has definitely helped me grow. And, and in that way in my business and added that 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 revenue streaming which is which is phenomenal it's good you know me mate i've always been <laughs> slagging off i can't let you have that moment without <laughs> slagging off property courses but i do feel that my view on it has really changed over the past couple of years because i do see the value in paying somebody like yourself because you know rather than these big seminars where there's hundreds of people and yeah. then you're not actually seeing the guy that's showing you how to do it actually doing it so that is the critical change for me if i am paying somebody whatever it is mm. a grand couple of grand whatever you want to know i want to know that it works mm -hmm. and they're and that's how they've become successful and that's how they've generated their income and that's how yeah. they built their, their portfolio not from the back of just selling people a dream yeah do you know what i mean no. and i think with you that is the main difference do you know what i mean so i've changed my view on property training since or, or you've trained your view to promote my property training <laughs> You know, like, there's, I've got to tell you about this example, actually. There's a woman that came on my, my property workshop, the last one, just a few weeks ago. She's, you know, she's ages with us. She owns a letting agent and a estate agent, uh -huh. but she's not done any property deals herself, right? Mm -hmm. Come the Monday after the three days, she got two properties secured to flip. Yeah. No, on a market where everyone's saying there's closing dates and everyone says you can't get deals. She, the, whatever, whatever, she, whatever she picked up, I can't, I can't put the trigger on it, but whatever she noticed and saw the opportunity, she got two deals secured on the Monday that are probably going to net profit are between 20 and 25 grand each. Mm -hmm. So you pay 15 on a pound for my workshop and you go and make that retu re return on investment. It's a phenomenal. This is what I need to do. I need to promote these successes. Like every single person that's taken action off the back of it is getting huge wins like that immediately because you're actually, it's, you're, you're telling the real, the reality of it. And, and I, you know, I'm not an educator. I, 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 I put that disclaimer right at the very start. Do not expect that you know, people who listen to the podcast are going to know this, but do not expect this 
polished presentation for three days solid, like ask me questions, grill what needs to be interactive, there's going to be swearing, I'm going to get passionate about it, I'm going to probably slag off surveyors and estate agents and letting agents and the professionals that don't have a fucking clue, mm -hmm. like I, I, I kind of put a disclaimer right at the start and and I, I, it works, like I, I'm attracting the right people and the right people that are, that are coming in and, and that they're obviously appeal to what I'm saying, but also they maybe th th there's something coming that's clicking on it that, that the majority is taking action and doing yeah, something. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't take, I can't make them all do something. Yeah, but yeah. the the majority is, and I'm I'm loving that, and, and I think this is definitely a promotion of for the, what the podcast has helped me do. Nah, that's good, man. Um, so I'm glad you're making millions of pounds out of <laughs> your property training course. That's absolutely brilliant. But let's no, just fifteen hundred pounds. I'm flipping not. <laughs> let's just talk about what the listeners are, are you know, hopefully yeah. gaining from it as well. So obviously, we put this content out. It's all for you. It's all trying to value based driven content to try and get you to obviously learn about property, take action, like Stephen said there. Um, I think one of the biggest highlights for me and we kind of go this podcast without talking about it is our recent events that we've just launched yes do you know what i mean f phenomenal mate and, and we did speak about it and we thought yep well, the podcast has came out at the right time and we're in a global pandemic and you know we, we were at a slower pace in life and managed to to pick up this this podcast which gave us a bit of focus and energy and it helped our community but it grew our community very quickly that probably would have took a long time to grow out, out with that situation and then obviously the last four or five months of returning back to normal the the community's not dissipating but it needed something else from what we provided so we thought well what we're going to do let's try in-person networking events so the last one or sorry the first one was literally only a few weeks ago wasn't it yeah so no we really enjoyed uh, doing it and uh, we're going to obviously try and make it a monthly thing mm. First Wednesday of each month, just to keep it simple, four locations around the country, Aberdeen, Dundee, Edinburgh, Glasgow. And, you know, we, we need to get the word out there, guys. So spread the word, because there's still people coming yeah. on the group going, is there one in Edinburgh? You know, because we've just started Edinburgh. We've got, I think we need to really mention all the team that helped us put that together. I'm not name drop everybody, but yeah. there's a lot of people behind the scenes mm -hmm. that helped us out with all these events. Yeah, we can't be in, in four places at once now. And I think that's the... the testament to the podcast and the community that we've created because people are actually wanting to be involved and, and happy to share their value and look at I suppose what we're doing and saying well ah, yeah you've done a good thing and you're sharing value to help people we don't mind doing exactly the same um, so we've got phenomenal hosts at each location that mm -hmm. you know we wouldn't partner with people that weren't doing great things in property because it's yeah. not our ethos of you know having someone stand up there and, and, and host it or, or educate you on it if they weren't doing it themselves each person that's in that room at the front of the room even the ones that are helping are still active in, in property in their property businesses so and um, we've got phenomenal people doing it um it, it was a it was a comfort zone stretcher like i was shitting myself a few weeks ago doing it in you, aberdeen. you were saying that obviously that some of the audience up in aberdeen there you were saying there's some real kind of you know big hitter professional people in the industry you know yeah there was a who's who of pro uh, property people in aberdeen that attended it. it there was really you were everything from surveyors or state agents letting agents to you know people have got 100 units like uh, it's a service accommodation businesses in aberdeen like there was the who's who so you know they're paying a low entry price point for it and and, and they're coming to get value and networking but we were in this but you're this you're the front of that stage hosting that event it was nerve-wracking um, but what I liked about, I mean, Glasgow, I don't know about the other venues, but what I liked, there was a real mix. Yeah. So there was the big hitters there. You know, there was a few people that have, like, you know, hundreds of properties, mm -hmm. that, you know, either they manage or they, they, they invest in themselves. And then there was, like, people who are just starting out. Mm -hmm. And that is excellent as well. Yeah, no, we, we did exactly the same, actually. We had a few people come up to me and asking, like, <laughs> and there was, you know, the chat about how we raise finance, or I'm just starting out, what do I do? And, you had that right mix of people that were there, f like you say, from the complete beginners, the novices to the, the the big hitters and the professionals there. So it was a nice, it was a nice event, and we know we thought we would try it and let's see how it goes, and we'll, we kind of yeah. we we penciled in a few dates for the first Wednesday every month. But I think after the success of the first one, I think people people really want people really want an authentic networking event. One of the funniest bits of the Glasgow night, one of our community members came up to us uh, came up to me and said I absolutely love the podcast listen to it all the time she says usually I listen to podcasts on 1.5 speed <laughs> but I just can't do it listening to Stephen Clark because <laughs> he just speaks so fucking fast <laughs> so yeah if you're uh, 
if you're trying to do 1.5 speed, I don't. I think it might work with my voice, but maybe not Stephen's. So maybe <laughs> 1.2 is the max for the Scottish Property Podcast. Yeah, I suppose well, it depends on what area you're living in in Scotland as well. <laughs> <laughs> the Ouija's might relate to you. Uh, so guys, if you haven't already done so, again, get over to Eventbrite and you'll see all the dates and the venues listed. But we're looking forward to, to continuing that on and getting around the country, mm-hmm. meeting some people from all over as well we're going to try and get around a few yeah that's that's our plan for it and um, yeah, both of us are not big on networking events we never have been we don't really like them we don't like the upsell we don't like the format we've not we've not really bought into it until we've done our one and then we're like wow this was networking yeah. you were engaging people were chatting people were making connections and and it looked like people were trying to like build on doing business together so um but as soon as we get them up and running in our respective cities then we want to try and you know kind of let our co-hosts take over our events and we're going to try and rotate around uh, the other venues either mm. as guest speakers or just or just turn up at the events and uh, and chat to everyone because it's uh, it's, it's the community isn't it it's, it's yeah. your, your network aye definitely and there's there's no selling and there's no BS as well that's the kind of main the main driver behind it but um, did Nick Potty just lose his chain of thought there <laughs> <laughs> edit uh, <laughs> Don't edit. <laughs> <laughs> Authentic. <laughs> Real life. <laughs> Next someone. <laughs> He's still stumbling. <laughs> Luckily we're not filming this. I just um I want to go shot on that slide on the soft play, mate. And get <laughs> so so let's um let's speak about you no know, we have we have had some phenomenal guests on it. Is any that's that's st- stick I mean, what, hundred episodes we've had a lot of guests on. Is there any sticking in your mind right now without you know that, that you really, really enjoy chatting to, that you really, really love, that gave you a good buzz? Well, you know I like the kind of boring, kind of mundane stuff. <laughs> you know, the kind of news and the, the, the economic side of things and the, the macro economy and all that. So um, and when I say boring, it's obviously boring to some people hmm. because it's not really about the kind of Instagram lifestyle and it's not about the, the, the fancy... The fucking Porsche that you were driving about <laughs> in yesterday <laughs> up in Aberdeen. Which I, was I was waiting on that. I was really surprised to hear that you can just walk into a Porsche garage and put two signatures and take up. I was like, where's the guy that's like out with them, like test driving? Uh, this has been on my goal for uh, since for forever. When I turn 40, I'm getting a Porsche. Uh, and I'm thinking, fuck it, I'm doing it too early. When it, well, I knew I was going to get it tight. And then, like, obviously, you've tagged the Porsche garage in Aberdeen. They see that you're driving without any hands, filming yourself <laughs> while driving at 120 miles an hour. So the next time you go up there, I don't think you're going to like take one out, mate. <laughs> anyway, getting back to um, the guests. Yes. So I think one of my favourite was uh, Adam Lawrence. He's actually based down in... Uh, in England but he has like a really really good outlook on the, the economy and the kind of what's happening you know with all the, the the current problems that we've got at the moment with inflation and all that so it was really good to get deep into that sort of stuff and how that could filter through to the property market. Yeah it's funny you mentioned Adam Lawrence because he's one of my favourite interviews as well but but I think it's because he hit both what we like he yeah. dug deep into the economy and and uh you know, like say in current situations and inflations and, and, and where he thinks it's going to go. But they also just bought 91 units with, with Ross Harper, which I love all that, you know, big thinking, think bigger. Um, I saw that, that was one of the episodes I, I think as well. Um, I, and, and I mentioned in Ross Harper as well, he was one of the ones episodes I really liked as well. You know, someone that thought big, I think it was like, his title was, you know, he mentioned on the episode was what to get 10,000 homes in five years, like massive targets, huge yeah. targets. It's just but when you come off these interviews, you do get a boost, like yeah. you do feel like it kind of makes you think, I need to go harder here, <laughs> I need to start, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much off, off the interviews. I really like the inspiring interviews, really like, you know, Andy Cook as well, their build to rent portfolio. I'm thinking it was like 25 million that they had built up, and they're, they're starting story off known fuck all and, and just going for it and winging it I just, I just like that it just shows you that anyone can do this anyone can get involved in property anyone can fund stuff anyone can find the deals like there's no restrictions to whatever circumstances you think you're in the story you're telling yourself it is possible because the guests we bring on are, are testament it's, it's possible yeah I think also probably we should say is I mean we do bring on these people and we do obviously take them at face value we, we kind of hope that nobody's kind of bullshit mm. us, do you know what I mean <laughs> and um, obviously usually we do we do a level of kind of due diligence and checking out and make sure that they're actually posting incredible and stuff like that but 
you know, obviously we can't vouch for everybody and it's just a wee thing that I would like to say if you're ever getting involved with anybody, you know, in a partnership or anybody's asking you for money or anything, obviously do that. You need to carry out that due diligence yourself. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we're, we're interviewing the person the, or the person or the, or, the, or the couple live. You know that there's not only so much you can bullshit about right. social media posts, stuff like that. So we're thinking that the fact that they're coming, because we've asked people to come on the podcast before that have turned us down. And we know they're bullshitters and we know they're full of shit. So yeah. you can tell when they turn down an interview with us, we're, going, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to drill in too much into personal details, but we're mm. going to ask the real questions that people want to know. You know, how did you get started? What was the stumbling points? Aye. What was your portfolio? At? What, you know, we're going to ask these questions because that's why they're on the podcast to share their story. Yeah. And if you know someone's bullshit, they won't, they won't share it because they're, yeah. they're, they're trying to hide behind their persona on social media. Aye, or if somebody's a shark, you would think that really they're going to try and keep it, you know, Undercover, yeah. they're not going to start broadcasting themselves on. Yeah, yeah, but no, I, do you know what? It's a good, dis- a good disclaimer to put in because anyone you're working with in property, you should be researching them and, and doing your own Aye. due diligence on them. Yeah. So I think that is a danger because people obviously think, oh, well, Nick and Stephen, I've had them on the podcast, or Nick mm. and Stephen are doing deals with them, or Nick and Stephen, mm. have, even tradesmen. And that I don't like, re- I don't like recommending tradesmen to other people because although they might, you might have a good relationship with them and stuff. You know, they might not be a good fit for somebody else, or they might be a clash of personalities. Definitely. Or, you know, they might have had a bad experience. So we obviously do like to try and help people where we can, but no. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um th- one another podcast guest I really liked as well was Mark Stokes. It put me on uh, oh yeah. SAS is in a deep deeper level. Like I've got mine set up now, I'm looking to do my transfer. Again, that was learning that, you know, I was aware of it and done a bit of due diligence beforehand, but bringing on someone like Mark Stokes to talk about SAS pensions was phenomenal. It, it mm. grew my, my knowledge and what was possible. I think it opened your eyes up to what was possible as well. Yeah. So I don't really have enough money to put in a SAS <laughs> pension, unfortunately. So you do. <laughs> and, any, any other ones you're kind of thinking about? Uh, Alex know? Walker. I thought Alex was really good. Um, he was like a proper... I don't know, he felt, he felt quite old school, but yeah. I liked that about him. Yeah, me too. And he too. was like, uh, you know, I don't do... You know, he was just straight talking and there was no kind of like, you know... He's a self-managing landlord of like what was that 170 houses or something. 170 houses that he's still buying, and uh, you know he's managed to systemize it so that everything comes through him. But because of all the systems and processes that he's got in place, he can actually handle it himself. And uh, I just thought he was just dead authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like that as well because when we started the interview with him, you that you hadn't known much about him, and I and I kind of tried to get in get him involved in a chat just to kind of get a bit of his background and so you had a bit more idea where the interview was going to go mm. but he started fucking going straight into it straight away as he is he's authentic he just tells it how it is he says it mm. the way it was mm-hmm. so we didn't even do, like we just didn't cut it we just kept it rolling and put it as a podcast that, that was the genuine chat yeah. he was he was in his car you know I think he was checking on a tenant checking something out he was doing something uh, he, he was just sitting in his car recording on zoom on his phone and just get and, and, and laying it down the way it was now I, I like guests like that no, he was Real. good. I think that when you start uh, lis- listening and speaking to people that have built up that kind of size of portfolio, it, it does give you a boost. Yeah. Although and, su- and success leaves clues, doesn't it? Yeah. If he's I mean, mentioned something, it's worth taking note. Not everybody wants that size of portfolio. I mean, I, I don't think I'd want that headache of having <laughs> that many, you know, that many problems, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> but, you know, in terms of the actual tenants contacting me and all that. I knew Nick Ponty was going to put a negative spin on owning 175 houses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It seems like too much hard work, mate. I mean, it depends what your goals and yeah, that's, aspirations no, that's are. Yeah. Uh, but I guess, yeah, I mean, hats off to him. He's, uh, we're going to try and get him along to one of the networking events anyway. But Yeah, and do, uh, uh, do you know what? Speaking about the networking events and guests like Alex as well, we... We were very cautious when we started this that you know some of the people that we've had on podcasts are the people that won't do a 40 minute powerpoint presentation so, yeah, yeah. so all your other networking events out there the guest speaker pre- prefers a presentation and they'll deliver it and they'll mm-hmm. they'll present it and it's polished usually because they want to sell something they want to have their yeah. nice logo up on the screen Aye. and then they just want to talk about their company or their service exactly or like whereas the guys that we've had on the zoom, their zoom calls you know um, or, or podcast interviews they're not going to spend they've not got the, the, the time the capacity maybe not, maybe not even the desire or the intelligence to do it like it's not their bag they're like no I know what I can do in property and I know so we, we were very cautious to make sure that we're not getting someone we're not just getting people in to do presentations we're getting people in to actually chat be on stage ask questions engage with the audience so rather than have it as a kind of stuffy event format we're, we're hoping to kind of make it very informal and like a podcast interview if the guests don't have a presentation that's not a problem we can yeah. bring them on and share value which I think other events are going to have missed out on 
Yeah, because absolutely. we're not going to bring people like that one. So let's just wrap it up here. And I think what we need to do is we need to just thank all the listeners. Yeah, absolutely. The, the podcast, would, if we weren't getting these downloads every, every week, would we have the desire to keep going and keep putting them out every single week? Probably not. So it's, it's all down to you guys. Yeah. We thank you for listening and tuning in uh, every week. So thank you so much, everybody. And uh, a big thank you to all the guests as well. I really yeah. appreciate all the value that people have come on and given the experience and uh, you know just keep sharing the podcast and we feel like this is just the start of things to come so yeah absolutely 100 episodes and it just it feels like the start big right hi, big high five <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys thanks for listening thanks for listening see you again soon <laughs>